In eastern Jackson County, the storm damage was spotty but severe in several places. Some people in bed last night were woken to their ceiling come crashing down on them. And many people in this area feel lucky they made it out alive. Uh, Phil, Shelley, many cities and counties in the metro area feeling the pain from these continued winter storms. Kansas City, Missouri does have some salt here. You know, as you can see on some of these side roads by the dirty color of the snow here, you know, they're, they're putting it down. But the problem is on some of these less traveled roads, and with this storm is that it's too cold to really work. Good morning, Dave. Yeah, good morning, Heather. Uh, we're at the Glassstone Public Works Department where it's a flurry of activity already. Check this out. Tornado and storm victims in Gladstone are lined up here, ready to drop off debris. Yeah, Phil, and those four men are all okay tonight, and they are actually working to fix flooding problems in this area, moving around sandbags like these ones you can see here when they got stuck in cold, ear-high water in a tunnel that we're actually standing over right now, and one that leads into the Kansas River. Security guards at the bank say after the elderly lady refused their help, she started walking across the parking lot here and into busy traffic on Blue Ridge Boulevard. Security guards say they followed her, stopping traffic along the way, and were finally able to stop her about a block or so away and called police. In eastern Jackson County, the storm damage was spotty but severe in several places. Some people in bed last night were woken to their ceiling come crashing down on them. And many people in this area feel lucky they made it out alive. The sound of repair drowns out the peace. Normal to the neighborhood around 43rd and Chrysler, where people work to pick up what the storm took down. I I thought I saw some things crack or heard some things cracking and then I looked at the tree and it was swaying and it just started coming at us. But Harris says she and her husband couldn't make it out of bed before the giant tree in the front yard crashed through their ceiling and crushed their house. Sky Fox over eastern Jackson County where straight line winds cut a swath about a half a mile wide, ripping the roofs off restaurants, crippling homes and tossed trees like toothpicks. I'm just a number. Gary Dahlum is one of many near 47th and Sterling where winds toppled trees onto cars and homes. His home is now holding up a few, and Gary's just trying to hold himself together. Has it sunk in yet what's happened? No. No. It won't for a couple days. For now, people like Gary and the Harrises say they're just thankful they're alive and thankful for neighbors being neighbors and helping them to pick up what's left. And people in this area say what surprised them more than the storm and the damage it caused is how people and neighbors have come together to help out in a time of need. Dave Dunn, Fox 4 News in Independence. So the prayer vigil took place, Dave. Yeah, Rob, this is also the corner where Charles McElroy was shot and killed. Check out the flowers that now cover the spot from friends and family who tonight were praying for peace, saying just as disturbing as the age of the boy charged with the murder is what they're hearing about why he did it. Friends and family of 48-year-old Charles McElroy gather at the corner where he was shot and killed. They remember the man called Short Chains Chuck as someone who brightened sad moments with humor. But McElroy's family says what's sad about his death is that a 13-year-old is accused of doing it. I just feel sorry for the little boy and his family. I pray for them. Prosecutors have charged 13-year-old Antoine Taylor with the murder. I want to try him as an adult, saying he can't be rehabilitated. McElroy's family says they don't want shortchanged Chuck to get shortchanged on justice. He can be rehabilitated. He needs to serve the rest of his life in prison. I don't want to see him get the death sentence, but I also don't want to see him walk the streets. You know, his family may can go visit him. I can't go visit my dad now. Community activist Alonzo Washington at the vigil says what may be as sad as the age of the boy charged with the killing is why he did it. What I've been hearing from various tipsters that there's two other suspects, uh, they're young people, and that this was some type of thrill kill, you know, just to see what it felt like to kill someone. Prayers can't bring back their loved one, but people here hope they can bring change. Change, they say, starts at home. Definitely starts in the home. You know, we have to be stronger fathers, have to be stronger parents. You know, thinking about this kid that's 13, you know, it makes you wonder what's his family life like, you know. If you know anything else about this 
killing, you're asked to call the TIPS hotline 816-474-TIPS. Dave Dunn, Fox 4 News, live in KCK. Aaron, water rescue crews eventually pulled the men out, Dave. Yeah, Phil, and those four men are all okay tonight, and they are actually working to fix flooding problems in this area, moving around sandbags like these ones you can see here when they got stuck in cold, ear-high water in a tunnel that we're actually standing over right now, and one that leads into the Kansas River. Sky Fox flew over the scene of the water rescue today. The four workers were trapped inside the 1400 foot tunnel. That's part of the Turkey Creek flood control project. The men were carrying sandbags on a boat through the tunnel when it suddenly sank. Rescue crews worry the men may suffer hypothermia and drown. But within two hours, all four men were pulled to safety. Trap workers tell us what caused their boat to sink. and Rescuers describe the scene when they found them. Hit it log jam or whatever you want to call it in the, in the tunnel there that lifted up the front of the boat. Just took on way too much water and went down. Dark, wet, loud, so the guys were cold, so we were glad to get them out of the water. Now the trapped workers and rescue team say previous practice runs here and for this same scenario help lead to today's success. Now the workers tell us when it rains an inch like it did last night, it can cause water to rise in the tunnel about four feet. Now they all of the workers were treated for hypothermia, but we're told they are all expected to be on the job again tomorrow. Dave Don Fox for News Live in KCK. Police say a witness came to them today and spent four to five hours with a sketch artist coming up with this drawing. Now take a look again because when they were done, the witness said that's him. Now here again, the victim worked at State Street Financial just off of the park here. Tuesday after work, he came here. It was a nice evening to clean out his car using a trash can over there when he was carjacked and killed. If you look over here, flowers cover the statue here in the center of the park to remember a young man loved by so many. The victim, 25 year old Brandon Fauntleroy McDowell, was just about to earn his master's degree and on his way to law school. Again, here is a sketch of the man suspected of killing him. Police say he's a dark skinned black male and want to point out he was wearing a black coat with the KC logo all over it. Now, a tip earlier this week led police to Brandon's Chevy Tahoe. It was found burned up and in a rural part of KCK. Brandon's family tonight are preparing for his funeral tomorrow, but tell me they want to thank people for coming forward with information. Now back out here live, people in the park here tonight tell me that this is normally a very safe place and word of this, of this carjacking and killing comes as a complete shock. Now again, if you know who this is, you're asked to call the Crime Stoppers hotline 816-474-TIPS. You're reminded that you can remain anonymous. Dave Dunn, Fox 4 News Live downtown. Dave. Yeah, Shelly, Phil, the children of the victim, Jimmy May McConnell, were very emotional right out here at the courthouse steps earlier this evening, and they had some very mixed emotions. They're happy with the verdict, feel bad for the man found guilty in her death, and are angry with the unified government and an ordinance they say is too weak. I miss my mother, and, and I'm happy that this happened. Janice Miller, happy that justice was served in the death of her 71-year-old mother, Jimmy Mae McConnell, nearly two years ago. This tranquilizer gun and an axe are what it took to get a neighbor's pit bull off the elderly lady. She died minutes after the mauling. And for me, I'm thinking about all the, all the good things, all of the happy things, all of the silly things that we give her a hard time for. Five of McConnell's six children were there for the verdict, all with warm memories about their mother, but none are angry with the man found guilty in her death, the dog's owner, Derek Lee. He didn't intend for my mother or our mother to die. He didn't mean to. He's a dog lover, and he simply wanted to have the dog. What bothers the family is how Lee was allowed to own the pit bull that mauled their mother, because they say it's not the first time he was caught with one, breaking the city law. What about those other two instances where pit bulls were removed and uh, there was no deterrent, no citation, no fine that he had to pay. What was to keep him from going out and getting those same kind of dogs? The family feels if the law and its enforcement had more teeth, their mom would still be alive. I miss my mother and I feel like because the law wasn't enforced, we lost her. And I feel like, you know, that was irresponsible. Now again, pit bulls are banned in KCK. The family says they're looking into possibly taking legal actions against the UG for negligence in enforcing the law. Dave Dunn, Fox 4 News, live outside the Wyandotte County Courthouse.